Hey guys, it's Clint Coons here, and in this video, we're going to talk about pre-construction investing and how to structure those deals. Okay, let's get started. Now, here's the thing, pre-construction investing, you know, I never really thought about putting a video together on this topic because it just hasn't come up before, but I realized that is a strategy. It used to be a very popular strategy back in 2005, 2006, and obviously in the last two years, it's also been very popular as well because there's been a steep rise in, in prices. That is, you buy a house today, you're in a new agreement with a contractor to, to build you a house, and by the time it's completed eight months later, it's already gone up $40,000. And in many times, the, the seller of the development themselves, that house that they sold it to you for $550, they're now selling it to the next individual that comes along for $620. So they're raising their prices as they go along. So for pre-construction investing, what you're doing is you're getting into that deal where it's going to take eight months to build the house. I'm getting it tied up under contract for $500,000, and then I'm going to kick it over to someone else and let them buy it and close on that deal, and I'm going to get paid. So it's similar to a, a wholesale type of, of arrangement. So the issues that come up with pre-construction investing are really twofold. Number one, you're going to have taxation, right? How are you going to be taxed on those deals that you're kicking off to another investor? The second issue you're going to face is what type of regulations do the developers have in place to prevent you from doing this? Because they know, and many times when you're in a hot market, let's say it was in Austin, and they're putting in a new development, that they're going to be escalating prices as time goes on, but they don't want to be in competition with the people that they sold the properties to. So they'll put in their limitations on what you can do as far as, you know, kicking these deals over to someone else. Maybe they'll say you can't, you got to close and you can't sell the property for a certain period of time. So you really need to work through all of that to figure out if this is the right strategy for you and what you need to do. So here's some ideas on how you may handle it. So the first thing I would bring your attention to is that if you're going to do pre-construction investing, you're, you're basically flipping the deal or wholesaling the deal. You need to be looking at using a, a corporation here, all right, or an LLC tax as a corp, okay, or an LLC, but you want to either choose S or C status for that entity. Why? Because when you're engaging in this type of investing, you run the risk of being treated as a dealer, which means that, hey, Clint, if uh, I make $50,000, from the pre-construction sales to other people and individuals, and that 50K is considered to be active income, all right, okay, in my hands, number one. But what it also does is it gives me what, what we call a dealer status. It tags me as a dealer, so I can potentially lose depreciation, 1031 exchange capability on my other properties, can no longer sell properties on installment sales. And you may be going, well, what does that have to do with uh, pre-construction? It means this that maybe you're also an investor, that you're buying property to hold for investment. You could potentially screw up that side of your real estate investing if you get tagged as a dealer. So the simplest way to avoid being tagged as a dealer and to keep control over your taxes on these sales is to run it through an entity that's treated as an S or C Corp for federal tax purposes. So this entity here becomes the dealer right here. This is the dealer. So this is the one that's entering into, that's going to uh, enter into the sale to, or the purchase and sale agreement to buy the property. Then it's the one also that's selling the property to the investor over on this side uh, uh, of the line over here. So that income now runs to this entity itself. That's how you'd be looking to, to structure this type of arrangement. You want to run the income running to the corp. And then from there, you can take it out. There's creative strategies to pull it out to keep those taxes as low as possible. Maybe you put a solo 401k off the side of this, and now you're putting money into a retirement plan. But that's how I'd run it. So my deals would run through my entity that's treated as a C or an S. Now, that handles the tax side of this. The other issue is going to be with the developer side of this, where they have clauses that state that you cannot sell this property for a certain period of time, you can't rent the property out. Uh, things like that. So how do we get around that and give us ourselves the flexibility so we can then kick that deal down to another individual? Well, in that case, what you're going to need to do is look at buying these properties here and using another entity. Maybe this is a land trust that, that's going to take title or it's an LLC. And so I'm going to create another entity as a layer in between these two 
so that my corporation ultimately owns this deal right here, that if I ended up, the contract to purchase this property runs to the entity, what I can do then is sell the entity to a third party. So you see now, if the developer accepted uh, the agreement in the name of my land trust or, a, or an LLC, so yeah, we'll sell it to that. Sometimes they may not accept the LLC, so, you, so you're probably better off going with a trust. And if you watch my land trust videos, never use the word land trust in the title. Just come up with a trust name and don't even put the property address on there. Make it look like a living trust. So if they accepted that, they agreed to sell it to the trust. Then what happens is that you're the beneficiary of this trust. And so what you'll do is you'll find this person over here that wants to step into your shoes and close on the property. You'll then sell them the trust. And so they'll step in and they'll take over the trust and then they can go up there and close on it. If you watch my video on assignments or novations, if you haven't yet, you should watch that because this kind of ties in to, into this type of deal. And you might be wondering, why don't I just use a novation clause in my purchase and sale agreement with, with the developer? It's because the developers already have their contracts and it's, you know, take it as is or walk away. So you don't have the negotiating power to put those types of clauses in there. And quite frankly, if I was representing the developer, I would say, no way, we're not going to accept this because we know what that individual wants to do. So now you have to think more creatively. Now, let's say they wanted to see a copy of this trust. Well, here's what I would do. I would put together my trust as a living trust. So it looks just like a living trust. Enter into the agreement in the name of the trust to buy the property. And then after I've done that, then I would convert my trust to a land trust. It's called a restatement. So now I restate this trust. It still has the same name, but it has a whole other set of clauses. So when the developer looked at the trust here, they thought, oh, it's a state plan for him. No big deal. We can do this deal. And they don't see the ability to assign off the beneficial interest to a third party. Then you change the agreement to put yourself in a position where it becomes a land trust so you can transfer that beneficial interest. So now what happens, you got yourself set up in a way in which you can bring this person in. Now the LLC here, that's a secondary way of doing this as well, but I don't know if the developer, many times they probably may not agree to uh, sell it to a limited liability company. That could be an issue and it could even be an issue with the corporation, depends on the developer as well. So maybe that land trust is where you need to go anyways if you're doing pre-construction, setting up the trust, making it look like a living trust, tying up the property uh, where you agree to close in the name of the trust, and then you kick that trust down to someone else and they step into your shoes. Hey, pre-construction investing, it, it, I know a lot of people have made money on in the past. The only risk, of course, in doing this type of investing is if the market cools off and those prices are no longer increasing. So it's one of those, it's get in, get out fast, make your money, get paid, and then move on. But anyways, this is how I'd set it up if uh, I was working with you and you wanted to engage in pre-construction investing. Okay, guys, be sure to hit the like button if you like the video. And by all means, look at my upcoming uh, YouTube lives. Okay, every couple of weeks I'll be having it. I'll put it up on the channel, I'll give you notification of it. Join me, bring your questions about asset protection there. I'll answer as many questions as I can get through during that hour. And it also gives me great ideas for future content. Take care.